Hello, good morning, and this is Taib, and I hope you had a great week. And I know that there's a lot of things going on now, and people are fearful, especially with the coronavirus, and you don't need me to remind you of that. But um, one thing we know is that God is sovereign, and he's still in control over everything that's going on. So I want you to really just uh, give all your fears to the Lord, like Pastor Julio said last week, surrender your fears to the Lord. Now, the Lord commanded me through Pastor Julio Sr. to give the word this morning. And I'm here to talk about what does it mean to, to live by faith. And the righteous shall live by faith. So this is the message that the Lord put on my heart to share with you guys. And uh, without further ado, I want to jump into that this morning. So I'll give you a quick um, background and we're going to get into the message. So let's follow with my presentation. I'm going to launch it. So the message is the righteous shall live by faith. And how do we live by faith? We're going to talk about that. Now, I want to start off with uh, the book of Joshua in Joshua 24. Now, so Joshua renews the covenant with Israel in chapter 24 of the book of Joshua. He basically recalls how the Lord has been saving Israel. And he gives all the people the points of references from verse 1 to 13. And then in verse 14 and 15, Joshua exhorts the people to serve the Lord and forsake their idols. And the people respond with, then the people say it, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us out, brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went. And among all the peoples through whom we passed and the lord drove out before us all the peoples the amorites who live in the land therefore we also will serve the lord for he is our god and joshua gives this very stunning response in verse 19 he says you are not able to serve the lord for he is a holy god he is a jealous god and he will not forgive your sins now the exchange between Joshua and the people of Israel reminds me of Jesus' statement to Peter right before he's arrested by the high priest and the soldiers. Peter said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. And Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny it three times that you know me. That's recorded in Luke 22, 33 to 34. So my first question to you is this. If you were a believer at the time and Joshua told you, you are not able to serve the Lord. How would that make you feel? And what do you think went into those people's mind? Because Joshua said, he's a holy God, he's a jealous God, and he will not forgive your sins. So we're going to explore all those questions this morning, and we're going to try to understand why it's important to understand why we should live by faith. Let's go on to the next slide. <clears throat> so the first question is this, what led Joshua to give this response. Now, one thing that Joshua understood is that the righteous shall live by faith alone. And Hebrews 11, 6 says, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I would like to check out Hebrews 11 and look at living examples from two individuals who displayed the type of faith that is required uh, to please God. Now, the first person we're going to talk about is Noah. Now, scripture says in Hebrews 11, seven by faith noah being warned by god concerning events as yet unseen in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household by this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith now after noah received all the warnings from the lord about the flood genesis 6 22 says that noah did this he did all that God commanded him. The key word here is the word commanded. So Noah's reverent fear and faith were the results of God's command. Noah heeded the warning of the Lord because the Lord himself had enabled Noah to do so. Scriptures say we love him because he first loved us. The only thing that set apart Noah from his contemporaries is the grace of God. God chose Noah because of God's own purposes. Noah wasn't chosen because of his own doing. 
but the Spirit of God on him, working him to will and act according to the purposes of God. So Noah's reverent fear was a result of the Spirit of God enabling Noah to fear. In the same way, you and I obey God because he commanded us to obey him. And God creates what he commands. Understand that. That's important. God creates what he commands. So that's why David said, create in me a pure heart and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. That's recorded in Psalm 51 verse 10 to 13. We can read it if you want. Now, if you obey God's word, it's because his spirit is working in us to respond that way. And that pleases God. So no one can boast in their own strength. This is why Joshua said, you are not able to serve the Lord in your own strength. Okay. Now we're going to look at Abraham's example in Hebrews 11, uh, verse 17 to 19. Most of you are familiar with Abraham's uh, story when God tells him, take your son, your only son, Isaac, and sacrifice him to me. Now, scripture says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom he was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was even able to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. So some translations use the word reason instead of consider. And the question is, what led Abraham to consider or reason the way he did? Who gave Abraham the insight? Did he come up with it by using his own intellect or was this given to him from heaven? Now, John 3.27 says, John answered, a person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. So Abraham was given that insight by God himself. God gave him the mind and the ability to reason and to consider. So it wasn't Abraham's own doing because then that would glorify Abraham. But God gave him an insight. God told him, you know what? Even if you sacrifice your son, I can raise him from the dead. So God gave Abraham that specific insight. So he was able to obey God and carry out the commands of God because God created that desire in Abraham. He created the insight and he gave him all the knowledge that he needed to obey God. You understand that? Now, scripture says that faith, by definition, is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we believe. Now, how do we acquire faith? Now, I know most of us will agree that we want a faith that can move mountains. And we are often told to, that we need to have faith. But how does that happen? Now, Romans 10, 17 says, I like the New King James Version better. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And we need to really, really understand what that means. It means faith is birthed by listening and acting upon what is commanded. And listening and acting upon what is commanded is birthed by the word of God. Uh, let me repeat that again. Faith is birthed by listening and acting upon what is being commanded. And then listening and acting upon what is being commanded is birthed by God, by the Word of God. Let's understand that. <clears throat> the Word of God. Now, we can look at several several references of the Word in Scriptures, but I want to zero in on the two uh, references below. In John 1, verse 1 to 2, Scripture says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Okay? And then in 1 Samuel 3, 21, we are told, Then the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So we understand that the word of God is God himself. So the word of God is Jesus himself. So again, let's go back. It says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. Okay, so faith comes by hearing the voice or hearing Jesus speak. And when Jesus speaks, things happen. We're going to take an example in John, and you can under, you will understand exactly what this means. Now, why is that important? Let's look at John 5, on verse 2 to 9. 
the healing at the pool at Bethesda. Scripture says, Now, there is in Jerusalem by the ship gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? And the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I'm going, another steps down before me. And Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. Now, the invalid man didn't know who Jesus was. He had lived his entire life in seclusion. So he was the best candidate for God to show his glory. Why? Listen to this. Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. Jesus gave the command, and what happened? In John 5 verse 9, it says, And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. How was this man healed is the question. Was this man healed because of his faith or was he healed because of Jesus' command? In most scriptures that refer to healing, Jesus commands the people for their faith and we have to be careful to really understand what is going on. These people's faith was a result of God's creating that faith so God gets the glory. We should never ever think that faith is a result of our own doing. Faith is a gift of God. This is why the righteous shall live by faith, because faith glorifies God because faith comes from God himself. Okay? Now, here's the thing. If we are earnestly seeking God, it's because God has created a desire in us if we love God, it's because God has created that desire in us to love Him. If you obey God, it's because God has enabled us to obey Him. Everything we do is possible because God has enabled us to do so. Hence, without God, it's impossible to please God. And God made it that way so He can get the glory because we exist to glorify God and He won't share His glory with no man. Now, if you can understand this, it will cure jealousy, envy, lack of contentment, pride, hatred, selfish ambitions. Because if anything is possible, it's because God made it possible. And John the Baptist understood that. I'll leave you with these last words from John the Baptist. He says here, I'll read um, John 3 verse 25 to 30. Now, a discussion arose between some of John's disciples and a Jew over purification and they came to John and said to him rabbi he who was with you across the Jordan to whom you bore witness look he's baptizing and all are going to him and John answered a person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven you yourself bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ but I've been sent before him the one who has the bride is the bridegroom the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoice greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. He must increase, but I must decrease. Okay? So, how do we acquire faith? We can't. It's a work of God. So, we have to humble ourselves and ask God to fill us. And we can't even humble ourselves unless God creates the humility in us. He often does so with trials. So if you are facing trials these days, if you are going through a hard time, maybe that's God's way of trying to get you to listen to his voice. Because scripture says, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him. And he was heard because of his reverence for God. Even though he was a son, he had to learn obedience through the things that he suffered. What is obedience? Obedience is being able to listen to the voice of God and doing what God says. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God gives his command to his people and they respond by faith. So Jesus says, remain in me 
and I'll remain in you. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you will bear much more fruit. How do we bear fruit? By remaining with Jesus. How do we remain in Jesus? Because he said, remain in me. He gave the command, so therefore it happens. The woman that was caught in adultery, Jesus told her, go and sin no more. That woman should respond with, thank you, Lord, for saying that because God spoke. Jesus said, go and sin no more. If Jesus says, go and sin no more, that means you will not sin no more. You will not sin anymore because I spoke it. Not Tai, but Jesus spoke those words. Okay. What did um, Peter say to him when he saw Jesus walking on water? He said to Jesus, Lord, if it's you, command that I come to you. And Jesus said, come. And guess what? Immediately, he started walking on water. He walked because Jesus spoke the word and his body and his mind and his DNA res responded by faith. So faith is a result of God's own doing, God's commands. So what we should do as believers is really fall on our knees and say, Lord, what are you saying to us? And lead us to obey your word because you create what you command in us. This is the rest that God offers. This is the rest of God is saying, be still and know that I am God. I will give you the desires. I gave you an example from scriptures. Let me give you my own example. I was a heavy coffee drinker and some of you have heard my story before about coffee. And I can stop drinking coffee. I actually got to the point where coffee almost became like my blood, like I say to a lot of people. And then uh, my wife bought a new coffee pot, and when it came to the house, it was too small. So we said, well, this is too small. Let us get another one. And she bought another one that was bigger. And as we opened the box, when the package came, the pot was shattered upon our arrival. And that's when it began to dawn on me that God was speaking. And one night in my bedroom while I was praying, the Spirit of God told me, stop drinking coffee and just like that <clears throat> by faith my love for coffee completely died and i haven't had coffee in the past five months and i don't miss it because god spoke the word and by faith i responded so now when somebody asks me <clears throat> how did you stop drinking coffee i can say by faith because god spoke the word and by faith my body responded and i can thank god because he told me stop drinking coffee God spoke the word, and his word will not re uh, return to him void. It will accomplish the purpose for which he sent it. This is why it's important to know the word of God. Because once we know the word of God, the Holy Spirit takes the word of God and makes it alive in our body. His word is alive, and it cuts like a sword. So how do we live by faith? By listening to God's word and obeying the commands. And that is only by the grace of God. God himself speaks the word. So if you've done any good deed, let's say you, you gave something to somebody or you went and served somebody, it's because the Lord spoke those words in your ears and your mind and your body responded and by faith you obeyed. So therefore that gives glory to God because God gets the glory because God spoke those words in you and you responded. So therefore the righteous shall live by faith. It's not by your own strength. It's not by your own might. It's not by your own Ability is by God's command that speaks life into us. I hope this um, makes sense to you. And I would love to, to talk to you more about it. Okay. Have a wonderful Sunday and may God bless you. In Jesus name. Amen.